so you stopped drinking, and then I had to let. It's just. Uh, you know, I'm a road dog. I go out People every two weeks. People don't understand that about comedy, that it is, uh, even if you're not like a drinker in the traditional sense of like being an alcoholic, booze is unavoidable. It's free. It's free. It's free and it's every, and if, it's After every gig, it's free. I always ask my uh, people like that. I just say like, if you had a job yeah. where when you were done, it was open bar and in a lot of places on the job. On the job. Yeah, they'd bring you, you'd yes. bring, would you like a beer at your desk, yes. sir? Would you and like the, a booze the people cubicle? you work with will send a shot up if, yeah. if you just <laughs> even hint about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, I was drinking Jameson the other night, and then all of a sudden somebody sends <laughs> you up a, one. Like a kettle of Jameson yeah. comes up. And then, the then a crowd of peer pressure. Do it! Do the What's shot! Wrong with you? Yeah, like, that's, first of all, there's so much pressure. I don't even know where it comes from, because I, I haven't stopped drinking, but I am trying to cut back. And Last time I remember you were, you were a bourbon. I bourbon probably still love bourbon. I'll always yeah. love bourbon. I would have sex with bourbon if it was a dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm getting drunk and late at the same time. What's happening? Uh, but I, I'm trying to be more of a. I'm just trying to be more judicious. You know what I mean? Because you just you feel it. You just start, first yeah. of all you start to feel like fuck the weight or your discipline or height. You just feel it so much more. You, when you wake up in the, like, you have that thing where you wake yeah. up at four in the morning like oh, I shouldn't have had that second glass of wine. No, I I, <laughs> I had my bottoming bottoming out thing was I think I was somewhere in Texas. And me and uh, DeRosa were riding oh, in. DeRosa. Yeah, we're riding in this waitress's car, and classic. What car? Of course you were. And, 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 and waitress's car. We're just no. We're, we're riding to some house party, and she's doing the whole. Again, why wouldn't you be yeah, riding to a house exactly. party in a waitress's car? That's this is the glamorous stand-up, <laughs> folks. I don't think you knew. I got picked up in a bitch's 1986 Honda yeah. to go to a dude's house. I don't know. And drink keg beer out of a plastic cup because I roll like that. that. I'm it. a headliner. That was it. And she was she was saying shit like you know I have uh, I'm, I'm sorry I have a cat. So, like, you know, the covered in hair. And I show up, and at one point, I'm hammered playing with a bulldog. That's all I remember going, this thing is awesome. Oh, God. And somebody finally. Oh, that's always the last resort of the wasted, start talking to house pets. Yeah, somebody said to me, going, like, because they weren't at the show, you're like, you're like that, you're that comedian guy. <laughs> right I'm like, yeah. And they go, well, you, you did a couple sketches on Chappelle's show. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, it's like, dude, I can't believe you're here. Why are you here? Yeah, and then I, I actually thought, I was like, you know, totally, you know, stroke my ego. Then I thought for half a second, like, yeah, why am why I am here? Why am I here? My dad had five kids by the time he was my age. Okay, I'm a fucking yeah. loser. And I'm drinking in the backyard of a stranger's house and talking to his dog. Yeah. yeah Joe, on the other hand, of course, was having a great time. So anyways, these guys are fucking jabbing this dude in the ribcage harder and harder. And then all of a sudden, three, four fans jump out of the stands and they start running at the cops. And then the cops literally look up. They look like, you ever see like those, those when the fucking couple of lions take down a zebra or some shit, and they begin to feed, and then all of a sudden 40 hyenas show up, and then they got to give up the kill? That's basically what happened. They looked up, and they're like, oh shit, four on four. So they stood up, and they tried to have a, we're cops, are you out of your mind? I made you kind of vibe, and then all of a sudden, those four showing up made another 20 people come out of the stands, and next thing you know, the cops are on the run. And then they get fucking beaten down. One guy in particular gets stomped even worse, way worse, actually, than the other fucking guy. It actually goes from from shocking to amazing to hilarious to fucking disgusting very quickly. You know, because, you know, you're always watching these guys getting beaten. This is a fellow sports fan. I don't know. It's one of those things that I always wanted to ask a cop, like, why do you guys, you got a guy down, he's face fucking down. I'm not being a dick. I'm not judging what you do. I don't have your job. I'm just asking. You got a guy face down. Somebody's got their knee on the guy, back of the guy's neck. Somebody else is sitting on his fucking legs. The most he can do is squirm like half an inch. All right? And the guy won't let you cuff him. You know, why not? Why rather than just taking an extra 30 seconds to let this guy tire out and then just cuff him? Why do you start booting him in the head or, 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 you know, doing atomic knee drops to his spine? Why is that done? I do have a theory. There's 60,000 fucking fans there, and you have like 100 cops. You know, and when I really think about it, the amount of times I've been drunk when I'm at a game, and I think about running out on the field, the sobering thought is, is taking that atomic knee drop to my fucking spine. And... You know, I got busted for drinking and driving back in the late fucking 80s, you know, back when they were actually considering making it possibly an Olympic sport, you know. It was right on that, that you know, but then the mad mothers against drink, drinking and driving, they, they won. It's very close. It's like when Quebec wanted to secede from Canada. Like, it almost fucking happened. Um, Summer Olympics, by the way. Let's not get crazy. It wasn't going to be in the winter. 
um, too much degree of difficulty. But anyways, the, the, all those memories of the beatdown that people take, plus the nightmare of the one time I was in the court system and somebody had my driver's license and there, were, there was fines and classes and meetings and, and community service. It just all just, I don't care how many drinks I've had. I'm just, I'm like, I'm not fucking doing it. Is that why you guys do it? Sorry, I had the hiccups. Bacon, egg, and cheese here, people. I'm off my oatmeal diet on the road here. Um, is that why? Is that why it happens? I've always wondered that shit. I kind of actually, I understand why you come up to the window of a car and because at any point, I get, if if I if any point I could get shot in the head and die on my job, I guess I would be on edge too. But I would just love to hear it from a cop because right, all I'm doing is speculating. So we have a couple of we have a video like that this week. We have another hilarious video of a cop pulls over this uh, minivan. And I swear to God, the amount of immigrants that run out of this fucking van, it is unbelievable. Every time you think the last wave of eight people runs out of this fucking van, another door opens and another seven people come flying out. And they got Benny Hill music playing, and it's the funniest thing ever. This cop gets so overwhelmed, he doesn't catch anybody. It's like a fat kid. If it was rain and candy, he'd be, every time he gets some in his hand, he'd want to go catch some more, and he'd drop whatever's in his fucking hand. That's basically what happened. Fucking hilarious video. I want to thank people who uh, sent both of those videos in. Um, we, kind of, we kind of have all cop videos this week because I'm trying, I'm trying to draw them out of the weeds here. Because I want to do a Monday morning podcast select with a, uh, a retired police officer. And I want to hear all these, these stories. We did interview a, a cop on Uninformed, but uh, I want to do it again because I, I have even more questions now. Um, there's another one where a guy, <laughs> he, he's getting arrested. I don't know what for. It's one of those videos that starts after the altercation starts. As far as I can tell, he changed his name and didn't do it in a legal way. He's being like a rebel. I'm not your property. But the funny thing is, is this guy knows his rights. And one of the funniest things, one of my favorite police videos to watch is when the person getting arrested, like, knows their rights. You know? Like this cop one time said to this little skater going, give me that skateboard. And he goes, No. And it's just one of those things as, as a citizen, you don't realize, yeah, like, wait a minute. No, you don't have the right to just take my, you're so like, do everything the cop says so he doesn't uh, arrest you or, uh, or beat the shit out of you. You know, you just feel like if you just say no to a cop, you're automatically going to get arrested. Well, this guy is fucking hilarious. They're going, you're under arrest. And he goes, what's the charge? What is the charge? And the guy goes, it doesn't matter. And he's like, yes, it does. I have a right to know as a citizen. I am not your property. I am the property of Yahweh. <laughs> this guy, I absolutely fucking love this guy. This guy, he has passion. He's informed. He's a little fucking crazy. He is a, he is a true fucking patriot, without a doubt. Everybody, the amount of people who would watch this guy and because he yells Yahweh would just say that he's a fucking, he's a nut job, is actually a travesty. Okay, here we go. Bill, uh, want to bang lesbian friend who is in lesbian remission. Jesus, okay, this is outside my realm, but I'll, I'll try and answer it. Hey, Bill, I want your opinion on this problem I have. I'm a 19-year-old college freshman, and I'm in a bit of an ethical dilemma. I have this friend who is a lesbian, and recently she, has been, she hasn't been having any luck with the ladies. So now she's feeling vulnerable to the point that she's act actually contemplating about fucking this guy she knows. After she tells me this, I start getting jealous because I've always had sexual feelings for her but never acted on them because she's a lesbian and I respected her. Dude, what kind of a fucking asshole are you? You know, why are you hanging out with her? Are you just waiting for daylight? What, what are you doing? She's a lesbian. She doesn't want to fuck you. You're just sitting at a, at a, it's a dried up well. It's over. Walk away. What else is there? Well, I guess she's a lesbian. Maybe she's into some... Uh, I don't know. Does she fix cars like you? I have no idea what the... <laughs> uh, is there anything worse than a guy just hovering around? You know, rather than going out and just like, I don't know what you're waiting for. Just plenty of fish in the sea. You're 19. Well, you know what? I'm being too hard on you. You're 19 years old. You have no idea. Hello, Cleo. Hey, Nia, can you help me out with this one? Oh, you got to go? Real quick? You got to go? This guy's trying to bang this uh, lesbian girl who's in lesbian remission. 
It means she hasn't, she's wanted to like hook up with uh, some other ladies, but they're not giving it to her. So she's actually been contemplating fucking this other guy. So now this dude's jealous because he's always been hanging around her. Remember that conversation we had earlier? That's why guy, guys hang around women. Either they're the gay guy or they're trying to fuck you. There's really no other. There's really... <laughs> All right. Well, I wish you could hang here. All right. Go have fun. No, I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. All right. That's nice, though. Your fans thought that you were coming on, and now you're not. You're leaving them oh, wanting more. God, you're, you're leaving them wanting more. Can we do this real quick? I, ugh, it has to be very quickly. Okay, so I told you what's going on. Yeah. Cleo, get out of here. Um, anyways, but now that she's in the mood to, go, to going back to fucking dudes, some other douche is feeling her up even before I knew what was happening. So this other guy got in there. He goes, I don't want to make her my girlfriend. We both made it very clear neither of us are good at being in relationships because we're both selfish people. I do not want... However, I do want to fuck her once, and I tried asking my cousin for his point of view on the situation, but he recently found Jesus. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. So the only answer to give, he gives me is read the Bible or premarital sex is a sin. What do you think? Should I sleep with her before she fucks this guy and realize she doesn't like men and ruin any chance I have? Uh, wait, should I try? Oh, should I try to sleep with her before this guy fucks her and she realizes she doesn't like men and ruin any chance I have? Or should I just go... Just be the friend and do nothing. Thanks. Are there no other women around for you to fuck that you're just completely singularly focused on and obsessed with this girl who's a lesbian? That's exactly what I said. Why are you hovering around her? That's what I want. Is it because you can't have her or like it's it's a it's a chase thing or it's a struggle that he's like, I gotta You know what it is? Her. I bet I they're the same her. the same height and they can borrow each other's clothes. <laughs> Just leave I was wondering, were you going to wear that flannel tonight? Cause, uh... I feel like getting involved sexually with anyone who's having, like, going back and forth with their sexuality and figuring it out is probably not a good idea. Just because there's probably a lot of emotional shit going on along with that that she may not talk about and you may not be aware of. I would just leave it alone. Yeah, why don't you just go talk to a girl that wants to bang a guy? Why don't yeah, you make it a lot easier? Make it a lot easier on yourself. Hey, okay. how do I turn this bus into a bicycle? <laughs> I've always wanted this bus to be a bicycle, and uh, now it's... Well, uh, wait, but, but men like the chase, though, right? Do you no, like, you like we like a layup. We like a layup. What? I thought men are all about the chase and make it difficult and all that. I thought no, that that's what good. you guys are into. You guys are into just making no. it difficult. We want you guys just to fucking... Just lie down. Yeah, and... recline. <laughs> <laughs> Stop acting like it doesn't feel good for you, too, you know? No, you know what it is? There, there is, as far as, like, uh, a good feeling is when a woman is making it difficult and you tear through all that bullshit and you're able to make her uh, succumb. Mm -hmm. You're rolling your eyes, Nia, right? You've yeah, experienced that, haven't is, you? Well, yeah, this is the speech that you give before you tell people, like... Oh, you, 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 you were making it difficult, and that yeah, dude was cock-blocking me, and I fucking... <laughs> I, that, 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 that right there is like... Uh, remember that year when, when Tom Hanks won back-to-back -back Oscars? Yeah. He's still a great actor, but, you know, is that ever going to happen again? Right. That's, that's my, that's my uh, sexual conquest. Oh, I the see. night I brought you down. You did bring brought me down. Brought you down like a fucking wildebeest on I the Serengeti. You from before. <laughs> you didn't have to. Look at See what they do? They just take it away. Oh, Cleo. Cleo, come on. Come on. Uh, well, all right. Well, that's my, that's my two cents. Okay. So I'm going to go now. Okay. All right. I'll see you. Have fun. <laughs> all right there, fucking female RoboCop. <laughs> fucking working out like a maniac. I'm over here. Becoming a tub of shit. That's right. All right. I'll see you later. So there you go, sir. This is what I think you should do. I, we basically, both of us, you got to stop hanging out with these girls that, uh, why are you doing that? You know? I know why you're doing it. I know why you're doing it. Because you can be like, dude, my dick is so intoxicating. Even chicks that don't like dick can't say no to my dick. Oh! Um, all right. Depressed dude. A hey, Billy cunt. Exclamation point. I've been, listening to, I've been listening to your podcast for years. Your deranged, psychopathic perspective reminds me I'm not the only one shaking ladders. I don't know what that means. Is this guy from Boston? I've been listening to the podcast for years. Your deranged, psychopathic perspective reminds me I'm not the only one shaking ladders, kid. Nah, it still doesn't sound, even from the accent. Shaking ladders. I don't know what that means. Anyways, I got a problem. Yeah, you know, I was in Boston all last week, so the, Bas Bo the Boston accent kind of came back. The old, uh, you know, I got a problem. Instead of saying, I, uh, get a job and get a job. Do it easy, get a job. And for those of you working on your Boston accents, J-O-B, just say like jaw, like I'm going to punch you in the jaw, and then B, job. Got to get a fucking job. 
know what kills me right now is like fucking 200 of you right now just muttering to yourself, get a fucking job in your cubicle. Um, <laughs> freaking out your coworkers, just mumbling. Get a fucking job. You fucking cocksucker. Um, I got a problem. For years now, I've been trapped in my KFC and wet wipes. Okay, that's disgusting. I used to be a bodybuilder, an actor, and a comedian with fucking prospects right in front of me. But then adulthood raped me in the eyes. Oh, Jesus. Could you be more dramatic? It sounds like that fucking chick from uh, Sex and the City. A uh, crazy broad broke my hat. I had, this is the guy again, crazy broad, broke my heart. I had to cut away old friends and family shutting me out of their smiles. All right, dude, this is like getting creepier with each sentence. If you don't bring this around in like two sentences, I'm going to abandon this. I had to cut away from old friends and family shutting me out of their smiles. Dude, what did you do that your friends and family decided they didn't want to be around you? Uh, anyways, I don't feel sorry for myself or want any pity. Uh, I just, you're not going to get any. So good. I'm glad you don't. He goes, I just want to know how to get out of this never ending routine of demise. Well, first of all, I would stop using those goth death metal words. You know, demise. What else you got in here? Adult rape me in the eyes. Are you, these are like song lyrics, you know? Depressed dude. What would be the name of this? Trapped in my KFC and wet wipes, right? It sounds like I can't sing like that. <coughs> Break me in the eyes. This routine of demise. All these fucking kids getting like wet, fucking whiplash. Um, I work too much in a job that was supposed to pay for co my comedy career when I don't work. I, uh, I was supposed to pay for my comedy career when I, when I don't work. Uh, I sleep or oh, when I don't work, I sleep or watch endless DVDs. I'm 24 years old. Uh, what the fuck? This reads like you're 56, dude. He goes, I'm tired all the time from all the hating of the world, and my body just won't listen to the screaming frustration in my soul. Dude, you listen to, like, you listen to progressive metal, I'm guessing, by the words you use here. Uh, either that you play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm really not helping your depression by shitting on you through all of this. Um, don't worry. I'm going to give you some sunshine here in the end here. So I, I sometimes get a spark of motivation to get back in shape and, to, and start writing script, but it only lasts for a day or two at the most. Yeah. Exactly. And then, and then the work comes, and you have to keep going. And that's what separates the people in life who fucking work and, and make it and those who don't. You know? Everything's fun for a couple of fucking days. I'm going to get shredded. I'm going to join a boxing gym. I'm going to look like I'm going to fight in a title fight. You go down there, you skip rope. I'm going to get abs. You're doing all the fucking shit. And two days in, you know, after two days, you, you, you get tired. All right? And that's where you need the discipline to get up and go over there even though you don't want to. You know? People who've written Oscar-winning scripts, I bet they don't like fucking doing it on, on a certain level. But they keep going. So I would just tell you to keep fucking going. Anyways, let me read the rest of this dram overly dramatic shit. I've lost all faith in the world, have nothing to fight for anymore. I respect your go-fuck-yourself attitude and want and want to know what you did to finally pick yourself up from your dark inflicted depression. Uh, sorry it's not the funniest emails, but I can really do it with you. Guys. I know, dude. I'm fucking with you. I know you're going through some shit. So uh, here we go. going to help you out here. Uh, first thing I would do, get rid of the KFC and wet wipes, all right? If you're already kind of a depressed dude, if you eat bad food, that's just going to add, because I'm just speaking personally. Once again, not a licensed guy here in case you throw yourself off the fucking roof, all right? Um, yeah, number one, this is what I do. Go, go out and get something healthy to eat, you know, drink some water, okay? Get eight hours sleep, wake up and eat something healthy. Then go to the grocery store when you're full and go buy a bunch of healthy shit. Okay, chop up the veggies, chop up the lettuce, get a fucking salad already made in there so you don't have to think about it. All right, cook up some fucking chicken, chop that shit up, make some chicken salad. You got that in there too. Get yourself some fucking lunch meat and get yourself some real bread from a fucking bakery. Start with that bullshit. You start eating right and then just start working out. You're automatically going to feel good about yourself and fucking stick with that. As far as that other shit goes, dude, you're 24 years old. All right, I started comedy when I was 24. You sound like you've already been doing it and quit. So you're ahead of where, where I was at at your age. So there's no reason to be depressed. All right? Um, this is how I got beyond my depression was I just started observing it. I looked at it as a spectator rather than feeling a thought and just accepting it and then being dragged to the bottom of the fucking ocean with it. I just started to pay attention. I just sat there and listened to what my brain was telling me. And it was a bunch of negative... Oh, my God, I'm going to fail. I'm going to have to go back and move in with my parents, and they're going to die. I'm not going to be able to afford to pay for the house, and then I'm going to be homeless, and then I'm just going to die, and, uh, you know, nothing's ever going to work out for me, you know? 
those were the thoughts I was having. So I just sat back and observed them, and I just started going, I, I don't want to think that. I want to think that. And I would just, as I felt them coming, I would just replace it with like a positive thought. I know this is really corny and simple, but I kind of started doing that. And the more I did that, because it didn't quite work, I think it actually didn't work in the beginning at all, but like I just kept doing it more and more. And then I just became conscious of when my brain was going in that direction. And um, working out helps me. Eating right helps me. Going down to a comedy club telling jokes helps me out. Playing drums, wrestling with my dog, you know, taking Nia out to dinner. Just go do something like it's just a choice. You know, July 30th, it's only going to happen once. Am I going to fucking be a miserable cunt on this? Or like I said, July 30th, 2012 is only going to happen once. It's just, it's just a fucking choice, dude. So, you know, if, if what you're dealing with is clinical, then it's obviously way beyond me. So I don't need, you know, and then I don't have to fucking apologize like Fred Willard. Um, I'm sorry that you didn't go to a psychiatrist and you went to a hacky comedian instead. Evidently, that's my fault. The pests are like the, the most loyal and active radio all, fans, I think, of any show. And they also turn on us as well. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, Keep us on our toes. It's like, fuck. Yeah, they uh, they They're definitely brutal. used to at the comedy shows. I and mean, you guys had some. We I went to one of your shows. I did one of your shows in Vegas, and it was great. The yeah. audience was great. No, but our I've audience seen, has it has to be said. They are a great comedy crowd. They will sit down and fucking listen, man. But but that and show they, in Philly, the infamous show, where that one they, they did. Were, there was a, yeah, Philly, that they one were they a little did. hostile. Yeah, well they they were drinking all day. We did these uh, comedy shows across America, and the Philly one is legendary now. And I feel bad because I know you're close with Don Marrero, but he yeah. he ate his balls that day. But <laughs> but I've thought about it many times since that went on. He never had a chance. He never had a chance, and Jimmy Schubert never had a chance. And Jimmy Schubert actually bombed in front of his fucking family that were basically sitting in the front row. Uh, they had to deal with that shit. Did Jimmy go in first? Uh, no, Jimmy came close. I think he was... No, I think he went... Who didn't bomb? Um, Norton. Bill Burr was next. Bill Burr saw what was happening with Jimmy Schubert and then Don Marrero. And then went on and shit all over. And he goes, you know what? They're fucking not doing this to me. And at that point, uh, our audience didn't really know Bill Burr yet. You know, they didn't embrace him yet, like other guys that came before Bill. He was sort of on the cusp of being accepted by our big fucking, you know, lunatic uh, audience. And he said, I, they ain't doing that shit to me. So, you know, it's legendary. That 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 clip is out there, too. Yeah. Where he took on the entire fuck fucking Fuck you and fuck place. the Liberty Bell. <laughs> right. Yeah. He and went after Philadelphia in did. a way that nobody's ever done no. before. And, and he... Uh, he they started booing him. By the end of it, he got a standing ovation. Yeah. It was one of the most amazing th things I've ever seen. I, I know I'm saying that a lot, but we're bringing up a lot of benchmarks today. But that was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen, a guy turn a fucking room like that. Yeah, that was legit. But you don't stop talking, do you? Like, yeah, fuck it. I'll just cook this side for a while. Just... No, no, you know what's funny? I'm cooking my brain talking about nothing. I am. I'm just walking around like, yeah, I just got a cheeseburger. Oh, fuck all you people. You know what, you fucking losers? I hope you all fucking die, and I hope the fucking Eagles never win the Super Bowl. Go fuck yourselves. Fuck all you motherfuckers, and fuck the Flyers. Fuck all of you. Fucking goddamn fucking losers. Boo and Don Myrera. Suck a dick. All of you. Suck a fucking dick. How's that? No, I'm segwaying into my next joke. You can all relick my fucking red nuts, all of you. You can line up in your Harold Carmichael fucking jerseys, and one at a time, you can all suck my dick. City of brotherly love, you bunch of fucking cocks. Fucking goddamn losers, 52 fucking hours into a show. The fuck am I gonna do at this point? You people are on a goddamn acid. You fucking be up here talking about Hitler, that ain't gonna work. What do you want me to talk about? Hey, throw out some topics. Let's talk about heart disease, something you're all gonna fucking die of, and I'm gonna laugh at your fucking funerals. It's gonna be great. You're all gonna get fucking cancer, which is fantastic, because all your fucking heads are shaved anyways. No one's even gonna notice. You're gonna get fired for coming to work too late, because they're not gonna notice that you have fucking bone marrow cancer. The only thing's gonna give it away is me laughing at you in the fucking background. You fucking bunch of losers with your fucking cell phone pictures. Fucking suck a dick. Fucking asshole. Eleven more minutes 
to this. I hope you all get in your Ford Focuses to fucking drive off the side of that faggot ass Ben Franklin Bridge. You fucking one bridge having piece of shit city that no one gives a fuck about. The terrorists, the terrorists will never bomb you people because you're fucking worthless and no one cares about you. You are this high above New Orleans. No one gives a shit. FEMA will never show up for you fucking assholes. I hope your mother has herpes in the center of her asshole and you go home tonight, you lick it, you get it on your tongue and some other horrific shit happens that involves cancer. So all of you, 11 minutes left. 11 minutes. I hope somebody takes a fucking beer stein and just slaps you on the back of your zit infested fucking shoulders and your awful man tit tank tops. I hope that happens to you. I hope the glass fucking digs into your fucking shoulder blade and then I see you afterwards. Hey, how's it going? Enjoy the fucking show, that's great. And I grabbed you by the fucking hair, but you don't have any. <laughs> they really have to come to this, people. They really have to come to it. I really hope all of you run into all those black people that you love so much here in Camden. I really hope that happens. I hope there's a line of all of you guys getting fucking carjacked, and they take out their big black dicks, and they just shove them right in your fucking mouths, each and every one of you, and somehow they just keep repeatedly coming right in your fucking eyeballs. Until it builds up so much that your eyes, they fucking crust over. You can't see shit. And somehow there's another dick in there for you to suck. Ten minutes left. Bunch of fucking losers. <laughs> fucking Rocky is your hero. The whole pride of your city is built around a fucking guy who doesn't even exist. You got fucking Joe Frazier is from there, but he's black, so you can't fucking deal with him. So you make a fucking statue for some three foot fucking Italian, you stupid, Philly cheesy fucking jackasses. I hope that cheese melts your fucking faces off. All of you collectively suck. your fucking Dunham and McNabb shirt. I hope he snaps both his fucking ankles in the first goddamn game. I hope you go home in fucking 16. I said suck a dick. Eight minutes left. Eight fucking minutes left. The Flyers, they even fucking exist anymore. A bunch of goddamn pansies haven't won shit since fucking Gerald Ford was in office. Why don't you just have the fucking ice capades down there, you ass. Remember they had that whole season where they wore the slacks? You bunch of faggots. What else? What else? I text your mothers. It's eight minutes. I'm doing it all. I'm fucking standing here. Look, I broke the mic stand. I got a little fucking cane now. I'm going to be the little observational comedian up here. What's that, sir? What do you have to say, sir? Never passed the fucking eighth grade. What brilliant shit are you going to fucking tell me, huh? Go back to the dock and go unload some shit. You fucking warehouse working, weed smoking, fucking disappointment for your mother. Seven minutes left. Seven motherfucking minutes left. And I'm doing all fucking seven. You fucking assholes. Fucking standing backstage for three hours to get booed by this GED fucking stupid ass piece of shit fucking crowd. radios fall on your head tomorrow, the fucking antenna goes right in your fucking ears, you fall out of one of those piece of shit buildings, fuck all of you and fuck the Liberty Bell, and shove it up Ben Franklin's ass, what do you think about that, all of you motherfuckers, I hope that bridge collapses under your pathetic lives, go fuck yourselves, six minutes left and I will be selling my CD after this shit you motherfuckers, and the only way you get one is if I throw one at your fucking stupid heads, you bunch of racist fucking morons. Look at this, what are you taking a picture of, E-Rock, huh? This is the most, I'm saying all the shit I wanted to say for 14 minutes. This right here is the theme of my set, a broken mic stand. Three motherfucking minutes left. Three fucking minutes left. What's left? The Phillies 
that faggot ass team named after a female horse? You bunch of pussies. You won one fucking World Series since 1880s. Suck a dick. Bring Tom McGraw back from the dead, you fucking jackasses. Maybe you'll win another one. It ain't ever happening. It ain't ever fucking happening with your red candy striped faggot fucking uniforms. The team should be selling cotton candy in the fucking instructional leagues. The other soccer team. A fucking ping pong team, some other shit ass fucking team that's never gonna win a championship. You guys haven't won a Super Bowl since they had face masks, you fucking jackass. Roman Gabriel running around a fucking leather helmet. Ah, suck a dick. What was he, a dad or something? You don't know who the fuck he is. I have my fucking shirt for this shit. Went to the Banana Republic, picked a $20 shirt off the rack. Ridiculous. Get booed by people sitting in the fucking grass. Goddamn launch seats. It's fun, isn't it? It's great. I'm actually getting, I'm actually getting fucking paid right now, people. I'm getting paid to shit all over you guys and your stupid fucking rock t-shirts of bands that no one gives a fuck about. Four minutes left. You with your rush fucking t-shirts. I beat the shit out of my girlfriend. That felt great. It really felt great. I want to thank you guys for having me. You guys were phenomenal. Each and every. Oh no, I got four minutes left. I got four fucking minutes left to fucking talk about you cunts. That's not bad. That's not bad. 12 minute rant. That's the first time I said cunt. That's a fucking record. I'm going to finish my set by taking this mic stand bass like a fucking disc. I hope I hit a baby in the fucking head. The one fucking kid who would actually go to chat college in this fucking crowd. What's that, sir? Dave Chappelle. Yes, he's not here. I wish I was on his fucking tour right now. Maybe I wouldn't have a bunch of cunts not fucking paying attention four hours into a goddamn show. Three fucking minutes left. Three minutes left in this motherfucking tirade. Boring. What's that, sir? Why are you screaming? You're in the front row, you dumb fuck. <laughs> God, I hope this whole crowd, I hope this whole mass age full blown. Like fucking, you get weak as you walk to your fucking cars. You just pass out, and they just find you. And uh, next to your 83 fucking Monte Carlo with gravel embedded into the side of your fucking bald ass fucking heads. No. Yes. What about Vincent Papalio? What about what? Vincent Papalio. What about not fucking interrupting me, you jackass? Play a fucking that record. Was idea. Idea. Sorry. I'm fucking trying to deal with this bullshit. Jesus Christ, the goddamn people on the show are giving me shit. So anyways, back to the jokes. I got a computer recently, people. <laughs> Fucking motherfuckers. I put in two minutes left. The last two minutes is going to be my rider for the rest of this fucking tour. I got one first. I do three minutes. That's it. I come out here with a fucking gun, right? That's what I do. I come out with a fucking gun, hollow tip bullets, and I just start fucking shooting people, okay? And everybody's chained to their fucking chairs. I just blow all your fucking brains out, like just, just one after another. Just fucking one. Two to the back of the head. Never ending. Coming out like a fucking Mexican with those two fucking crosses of bullets. I just blow all your fucking brains out. I would really enjoy blowing everybody's brains out. Just fucking, just, just the next day, somebody mopping up. The three pounds of fucking brains that are actually in this goddamn crowd. <laughs> One minute left in the period. <laughs> Alright, listen. This doesn't change anything, this set. I still fucking hate you people. <laughs> I hate this fucking city. I hate the way you eat your little shitty ass fucking subway. And uh, why don't you fucking build something for Joe Frazier and get that fucking idiot. You guys all gonna go see Rocky 19? Yeah, dude, I think you can win! <laughs> Alright, listen, I'm out of time. You guys, you guys were here, man. Thank you very much. All of you go fuck yourselves in your own assholes.
Bill Burr started out in Boston, and you deal with so many crowds like that. Yeah. Drunk, angry, crazy fucks. That you develop that style, that, that right. you know, that uh, attack style. That was such a Boston, Is Boston set. Is Boston tough for you guys? Boston's a great place. It's but a great I mean, place to do stand-up. Well, as long as you got your, your shit together. But, I mean, when you're coming up, I, I would imagine it was hard. Well, when, when Bill and I came up, I was a couple of years before him, but um, when we came up, there was so many good comics around that, yeah. like, the, the rules of the land had been pretty much established, and there was a lot of, like, really good places to do stand-up. Right. But there was also, like, a lot of, like, really fucked up little shitholes that you get sent to. Those right. are, like, so important, though. Of course. You know, you can't have, like, only easy crowds when you're starting out. Right. To really learn how to do comedy, you got to be able to do some hostile places. Right. So I see, like, a guy like Bill... In that video, it's like that's right up Bill's alley. You get it. You do stand up in Boston. You're gonna have to deal with some fuckheads. <laughs> you get it. I miss those shows. We're we're thinking about bringing them back. We'll Bring say. them back, man. Yeah, It'd be maybe, fun. Maybe this coming summer we'll do one or two. You were the guy. Advice: Exotic pets. Uh, Bill, last week I was laid off from my office cubicle job of four years. I am now a 25 year old unemployed college student trug struggling to make rent. Ah, oh, Jesus. My heart goes out to you, brother. But at least you're 25, you're not fucking married, you don't have any kids. That's the bright side. And I know you don't need to hear that. All right? All right, here we go. Can't go back to my parents as they are halfway across the planet in Taiwan. Now, my question is do I continue, to tr do I continue trying to get back in the rat race, or do I follow my dream of becoming an exotic pet reptile breeder? Jesus Christ, how the fuck do I, are you just fucking with me? This is your dream? Well, you know what, you are from Taiwan. I imagine everything that's considered exotic over here is like nothing. You know? I bet over in Taiwan, instead of getting like a bicycle as a four-year-old, they give you like a defanged cobra or some shit. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to stop and laugh at the ignorance of that statement. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I have no experience in the field. Fantastic. You're going to be on Spike TV's A Thousand Ways to Die. Except, for, okay, except that, that, okay, I have no experience in the field, except for that I have a snake and four hamsters as pets. All right, dude, I don't want to burst your bubble, but there's nothing exotic about hamsters, even if you have four or cuatro. Sorry, I started the new fucking Rosetta Stone Spanish again. Hmm? Yo tengo un pero es gris e blanco. Pero es bueno es loco. Hey, loco. How the fuck you say it? My dog's out of its mind. Um, la mujer. A manzana verde. Um, I've been... Let's get back to this shit. <laughs> I think I just said the woman and then green apple. There's really nothing that connected either one of those. I'll go fuck yourself. I'm going to do it. At some point in my life, I'm going to become bilingual. So anyways, this dude wants to start raising exotic pets, breeding them. He has no experience. Now, what kind of fucking snake do you have? You know, if you have a garden sna gardener snake, I guess you got to start somewhere. You do have a reptile and uh, four little rat things. This is cool, dude. You know what you're doing? You're doing like the open mics of this. I get it. You've got to start slow. You can't start right with the black mamba going to get yourself killed. Anyways, he said, I've been to the Reptile Expo a couple of times and saw that vendors there just breed and sell snakes for a living and thought to myself, holy shit, I want to do that. Encourage animals to bang and sell the offspring. All from my own apartment, living the dream. What to do? Any advice? Uh, what gave you the balls to start stand-up? Um, understanding the opportunity cost of the income of a full-time job. Uh, any advice would help. Thanks, Mr. Burr. All right. All right, what do you do here? Well, dude, you're, you're doing the right thing. You basically, like, you, you go into one of those uh, reptile expos and looking at the douchebags doing it and being like, I could fucking do that, was like me when I used to watch some of those stand-up shows and be like, I'm funnier than this guy. All right? And you have the luxury of not having a job right now, so you don't have to worry about, you know, well, what if this interferes with my job? You don't have a fucking job. Um, your biggest thing right now, dude, is you need income. All right? So... I would continue looking for a job that is flexible, all right, while you start building your stockpile of uh, reptiles. First thing I would do is I would go on the Internet and I would read as much as humanly possible. I would go to howtomaketwosnakesfuck.com. I would start. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, dude. I would just keep going to those expos 
like their open mics, I would keep reading up on it. I would try and find, uh, this is what you do. This is what you do. Act like you want to buy a fucking snake and go to some fucking dude and ask them how they got into the business as you pretend like, you know, like you're browsing. Or maybe you can get a job working for one of those guys. You figure out what the fuck he's doing, right? You, you pull a Joe Kennedy that I've learned reading in the wonderful book, The Sins of the Father. Um, yeah, that guy used to work every place. He'd work at a place for like seven months to two years. He'd rifle through all the files, get all this insider information, make a boatload of cash, and leave the fucking company in the shitter. Okay? Now, I'm not saying to do that, but fucking work for these other guys. Figure out what they're doing. Do what they're doing. Become better at it. That's what I would do. If you really want to do this shit, I would. But uh, I got to tell you this, man. Um, I don't know how you make two pit vipers fuck each other. But uh, I would definitely get a, uh, I don't know, I'd get a thick pair of gloves. How do reptiles even get turned on? They just have that fucking look on their face like you don't know what they're thinking. You know, I tell you, if snakes had fucking hands, like they would win World Series of Poker every year. There'd, there'd be no fucking way to tell what it had. Is it holding shit? Is it got a full house? It can't fucking just sit there sticking its tongue out of me. Um, I go... I go to the airport, and I'm taking the red eye, I'm taking this 1055 flight non-fucking-stop because that's how I do it, all right? I'm on a good plane. Why would I want to get off it and switch and roll the dice and get on another one? You know, let's just fucking get there. When, it, when I drive up to San Francisco, I don't pull over in fucking uh, Burbank and then get, get into another car. We get it, Bill. All right. So I get on the fucking plane, right? I use my miles, bump myself up like a fancy person. You know, maybe maybe I invented the Cheesecake Factory, people are thinking. And then they see how I'm dressed and they go, oh, no, he didn't invent the Cheesecake Factory. Um, and I go to, go to sit down in my seat and I go to set my bag down. I was going to set it down right in front of me. And the nice fella sitting next to me goes, why don't you stick it in the middle? There's room. And he moved his bag out of the way. I'm like, all right, this guy's a solid dude or whatever. And then all of a sudden the waitress comes by. A stewardess, whatever, she comes by, um, flight attendant, whatever the fuck you're supposed to call him. She comes up and she, uh, can I get you jelly and a drink? And I was like, yeah, can I get a, let me get a water, please. Ice or no ice? What, however you make it. Stop acting like it's a fucking martini. It's all right. Just give me a water with ice. Thank you. Um, and the, the guy next to me, he orders a doers. Neat. No ice. No nothing. Just put it in there. So they bring our drinks. All right. And I'm really thirsty, so I start sucking mine down, and he just throws his back like it's nothing. Like fucking John Wayne, right before he's going to turn around and beat up three guys, three mustachioed guys in the 1930s, right? So um, I'm just sitting there, and everybody's getting on the flight, you know, and I'm looking around at the passengers, you know, fucking doing whatever I'm doing. And all of a sudden, the guy next to me, Mr. Dewars, goes to me, uh, he goes, excuse me, he goes, are you afraid to fly? And I looked at him, I was like, what? He goes, are you afraid to fly? And I go, no, no, I'm not. And he goes, he goes, all right, but you know, it's, <clears throat> he goes, it's okay. You know, it, it's okay to tell me if you're afraid to fly. And it's immediately getting weird. And I'm like, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And then I'm thinking in my head, wait, is he afraid to fly? And that's why he's drinking the way he just drank. And now he's hoping that I'm going to be afraid to fly. So he, you know. He just wants to open up. That's what I'm thinking. And I, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And he won't leave it alone. He goes, all right, because, you know, you're, you're, you're fidgeting. You're looking around at other passengers. And I'm sitting there looking at the, like, is this guy fucking serious? And I go, no. I go, I'm not afraid to fly. So now I'm like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to this guy for the rest of the flight. This guy's weird, man. It's like 30, just get paint the picture. He's like 32-year-old, wiry <clears throat> In shape, but like wiry white dude. He's got a scully cap on with fucking glasses. Um, <clears throat> you know. And uh, he goes, uh, like, there's like a minute of silence and people are still getting on the plane. And then he goes, hey, sorry about that. Sorry, we, we just we just got off on the uh, wrong foot. He's like, my name's so-and-so. He goes, what's your name? And then I'm thinking in my head, like, what's my name? My name's Frank. I wanted to give him like a, but I just, for some reason I just wanted, it's Bill. And he goes, oh, hey, Bill. And he goes, nice to meet you. So we shake hands. 
And I'm just looking at, I don't have any poker face. I'm looking at the guy like, what the fuck is your problem? I'm not even trying to not, I'm not trying to be pleasant. I'm already done with this guy. So then the guy goes, oh, hey, Bill. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right? Like he's fucking interrogating me. And I, I'm like, is this guy fucking serious? And I start doing the math in my head going, wait, is this guy like an air marshal or something? And I'm like, no, he's not. He's fucking slamming booze over here. Fuck this guy. So I just go, I go, look, I don't, I don't have to answer your questions. <laughs> That's it. And I just look straight forward. <clears throat> he goes, okay, now I'm concerned. Okay. I am concerned. And I'm looking at him like, concerned about what? He goes, you're fidgeting. You're, you, you have issues with other passengers and blah, blah, blah. blah. He starts painting like, like this, like he's been, I don't know what the fuck, like psychologically breaking me down. All right. So now this, by this point, they've closed the fucking the door to the fuselage and we're starting to taxi. And I just finally look at the guy and I, and I go, I go, you know, I came up with the fight. At one point, I literally stick my hand out because he kept saying I was nervous. And I stick my hand right in front of his face and I hold it level. Oh, that's what I did the first time. Yeah, I, I hold it level. I go, I'm not nervous. And he goes, well, anybody can do that. And that's when I was like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to the guy. Sorry, fuck this story up. Then, then, he, then he came back, got my name. Now he's going, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I finally look at him. I say, listen, pal, I'm drinking waters. You're drinking doers. Okay. There's no issue over here. And then he goes, it wasn't doers. What she gave me wasn't doers. Really? What was it? Some sort of spy juice? You fucking jerk off. At this point, I want to punch him right through his fucking stupid wiry glasses. Right? So he's going like, you look around hostile. And I said something that just ticked him off. I was just, yeah, dude, I go, I don't have to answer your questions. All right, leave me alone. And then he goes, uh, he goes, he goes, he starts going like, okay, now I am really concerned right now. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I just look at him. You know what I start doing? I start doing like this Ryan Gosling. You know that little smirk, that fucking Mona Lisa smile he has as he smirks his way through all his fucking movies? I, do, I go full on Ryan Gosling. Now I'm not talking to this guy. And I just keep looking at him. And I give him that little half a smirk. And I just shake my head. That's my game now. That's, this is my game. It's like if you're going to be a dick right now with your fucking delusional authority, right? That you're going to like we're in fucking Guantanamo and you're going to waterboard me. Huh? There's no water. There's no board. Go fuck yourself. Here's my smirk. And I'm just going to shake my head at you like you're a fucking pathetic human being. This is what I'm doing. All right. And this is the funny thing. I'm such a dick. All I have to say to the guy is I'm a comedian. I'm going to do a sold out show there. And that would make him back off. But I'm a dick. I'm like, fuck this guy. I want to see where this is going. So now he's all fucking amped up and he starts dropping F. You know, he's saying the F word. He's sitting there going, if you don't he goes, if you don't fucking answer my question right fucking now, I am going to hit that call button. We're sitting there taxiing down the fucking, getting in the line. I'm going to fucking hit this fucking button if you blah, 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 blah. And I'm just fucking Mona Lisa smile, smirking, just shaking my head like you are a fucking retard, right? So now he's, he's saying the F word so much. The lady who's sitting in front of me, diagonally in front, right in front of him, turns around and looks at us. And now my heart's racing. I'm like, where's this going? This is going to be great. I am 100% fucking innocent. This guy's drunk. And I think he's going to hit that button. Oh, I got a feeling he's going to hit that button. What's going to happen, right? I want to see what the pilot looks like. Let's see where the fuck this is going, right? So he goes, if you don't fuck you, he starts, he starts bringing his hand up to the button going, I'm going to hit that button. You don't think I'll fucking do it? I'll hit that button. And I'm sitting there smirking at him, thinking in my head, go ahead, hit the fucking button. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, right? So finally, now he wants to hit the button, and he can't fucking find it. And it's in, in defense of him, I couldn't find it either. I was looking up there. I half wanted to hit it myself. Then he finally, he finally finds it, and he hits it. Boom, right? And now I'm just like, holy shit, what's going to happen? And he's sitting there going, yeah, huh? You want to fucking play this game? You want to fucking play this game? And I'm surprised. I mean, it took like fucking like 30 seconds before a flight attendant, the one who gave him the booze, which evidently wasn't booze, comes over. And at this point, we're like doing that shit where we're behind a plane. We're almost ready to take off. Like we're pulling up and then stopping, pulling up and then stopping as planes are taking off. So she goes, yeah, what's the problem over here? And he goes, uh, I'm not comfortable to fly with this guy. This guy, he's fidgeting. He's looking around at other fucking people, blah, 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 blah. He's doing all this thing, right? And then the stewardess looks at me and I'm just sitting there fucking my little smirk, just shaking my head. And I'm just looking at this dude, just shaking my head like this guy's out of his fucking mind. I don't say a word. And this guy goes on and on and on about his fucking psycho babble about how I'm this security risk. So she goes to, so she goes, okay, um, any other passengers? Have you noticed anything? She's talking to everybody first class at this point. 
has anybody noticed anything odd about this guy? And the lady who was sitting right in front of the dude diagonally from me turns around. She goes, yeah, I've been listening to this guy ber berating this other passenger. She's on my side. And I haven't said a fucking word. This is great. And I'm just sitting there smirking. Then the stewardess looks at me and I shrug my shoulders like, I don't know what to tell you. So finally she said, sir, do you have anything to add to this? And I just said, I, look, I'm just a guy trying to go to Indianapolis. This guy over here, he starts slamming his doors. I kind of felt like a rat when I said that. I go, he's slamming his doors. Next thing you know, he's dropping the F-bomb to me. Then I'm thinking, oh, fuck. I just said bomb, right? Fortunately, nothing happens. So now another fucking, the male stewardess comes over, right? Now he's going like, what's going on? And the captain of the fucking, now at this point, we pulled over and the plane has stopped. 250 people trying to get to Indianapolis and jerk off over here who can't hold this fucking alcohol who just watched uh, Person of Interest every, every, I guess, evidently. I have no fucking idea. Now the plane is stopped. This fucking jerk off has stopped the plane. Interrogating a goddamn comedian like I'm in the fucking Taliban and like he works for the CIA, right? So now we're just sitting there. <laughs> and the captain is up front in the plane like... Saying to the stewards, is going, basically relaying, do I really have to fucking come back there? This is the last flight of the night. Is there really a goddamn problem? And that was the vibe. And they finally said to the douche sitting next to me, are you going to be okay to fly with him? And at that point, it appeased his fucking ego that he was somehow in control. And he goes like, you know what? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So they go, okay. So now the plane's going again. And now we, now we fucking come around, and he's sitting there, fucking, he's in my ear. And at this point, I am laughing. Like, the fucking laugh you hear me doing the podcast, that's what I'm doing. And he's sitting there going, oh, I, I, he goes, you know what, I'm glad. I'm glad you, st I, I hope you fucking do, I hope you fucking try something. I hope you fucking try something when we're up there. I really hope you fucking try something. And I'm just fucking, like, gut busting, laughing, shaking. Like, what are you going to fucking do to me? What are you going to do to me? Huh, are you going to punch me in the face, you fucking wiry jackass? With your fucking glasses on? You know, that's a federal offense. You're going to go to jail if you do that or something. I don't know what, right? So I'm just sitting there fucking laughing at the guy going, I actually, at one point, I put my fucking little eye pillow thing on, you know, like I'm going to sleep. Oh, I had that out too when the stewardess was talking to me. I was like putting it on as this total mind fuck. Like, I, I don't know what this guy is. I'm just trying to go to Indianapolis. I'm going to sleep. And um, so I got, I got my fucking eye thing on, right? As he's sitting there threatening me, just I was going total passive aggressive. It's like, dude, I'm so not concerned with you. I'm literally putting a blindfold on. All right. So this fucking guy, he starts going. He goes, yeah, he goes, you think you fucking won this? You think you fucking won this? He goes, my, you know, who my dad is my dad. He started saying his dad's some major CEO in Indianapolis. Doesn't sound like a fucking made up story. I swear to God, this is all true. He goes, my, my dad is some a major CEO in indianapolis and i'll have you fucking arrested and the lady turns around again i'll have you fucking arrested the second we get on the ground i'm thinking like for what for what sitting here you fucking loser learn how to hold your alcohol all right and he starts describing the view that i'm gonna have when i go to jail like some fucking law and order episode oh you're gonna love it you'll be able to see lucas oil field and blah blah blah, blah, blah. and i'm just sitting there cracking up laughing and then there's this pause right and i'm thinking finally he finally shut the fuck up it's like a three, four minute pause. He finally just gave up because I wasn't giving him anything. I was just laughing and shaking my head. I was being a dick to him. I was because I was enjoying it. And then there was like a three minute pause. And then all of a sudden he just goes, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> so we're like 20 minutes into the flight. And I got to be honest with you, my adrenaline was so going during all of that because I knew I didn't do anything wrong, but I thought we were literally going to go back and there was going to be fucking cops there. And like if, if 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 the fucking stewardess or the pilot asked me who I am and where I'm going, I'm going to tell them I respect your authority. You're just some I don't you don't have any fucking authority. I don't have to answer your questions. It was pro it was one of the most fun experiences i've ever had with another human being like when somebody thinks that they have power and you know they don't and all they can do is try just keep bluffing and raising their voice and start cursing at you and if you just start laughing at them the look on their face is fucking priceless so the last thing he said he said why are you going to indianapolis bill right and i fucking 
started howling, just fucking holding my stomach, shaking my head. And with my fucking eye pillow thing on, right? And I know I'm going to get a ton of shit that I wear one of those. I, they're fucking underrated. Get the one at Brookstone where it's literally a pillow. I'm telling you, you can fall asleep 12 noon facing the sun. It's awesome. So anyways, like after he, he asked me, what, what, you know, where you going, Bill? It was like, it was like a 10 minute, like probably 10 minutes had gone by and I can't fucking sleep because it's so funny to me. I can't wait to tell the story to every comic I know. I can't wait to try it on stage to see if it's funny or whatever. Uh, so finally, I just like, ah, oh, fuck it. Maybe I'll just get on my computer and I bring up my eye pillow and I like, I got to look at the guy because I know he's fucking staring at me, waiting for me to do something, right? So I lift it up. I get my fucking Mona Lisa smile going and I look over at the guy and dude, he is fucking passed out. <laughs> He looked like he got shot. He was sitting there like his head was just hanging straight down. And any time the plane moved, like his head was like, I mean, he looked like he got knocked out. And for the rest of the fucking flight, old fucking, uh, oh, what's Matt Damon's character? Jack Ryan. Old fucking Jack Ryan over here is just, you know, the sky marshal. The fucking booze bag and God knows what else he was on. He was just completely out, passed out for the rest of the fucking flight. And this is how much a dick I am. I was having so much fun with this guy. I start, I can't sleep. So I start slamming waters because I want to have to get up and take a piss just to see if this guy's going to freak out because this security risk is getting up. And this, the joke was on me. He never regained consciousness. And then I really had to take a piss, but I'm such a stubborn fuck. I was holding it because I wanted to make sure he was awake when I got up because I was going to give him a little smirk and then I was going to get up to <laughs> see if he hit the call button again. Um, but he didn't, he didn't wake up till we, we hit the ground and, um, and then it's funny. Then he woke up and it was like four hours later. So now he had kind of slept off whatever the fuck this guy was on. And I'm sitting there smirking, waiting for the guy to start talking to me. He won't look at me. And I, I, and I think at that point he kind of fucking realized that maybe he got a little, uh, a little extra, a little too patriotic. So we stop. We stop at the gate and everything, and we're going to get up. So I grab my shit, I get up, and I'm just kind of looking at him, and he won't look at me. And then the lady who was sitting in front of me had this big smile on her face. She goes, "How you?" She goes, "How you doing?" And I went, "Good." I go, that, "I go." That was an interesting one, and I said it really loud so the guy heard, and he didn't say anything. And t this is what he did to try to save face. His pillow was kind of stuck behind, was kind of stuck behind his shoulder in like a weird place. So he was frustrated with it. So he. he ripped it out from behind him and kind of threw it down on the floor and went Ugh. like <laughs> try to do some caveman grunt to try to still have some sort of uh i don't know what so so that was my flight to indianapolis people hey what's going on it's bill burr and it's time for a very special episode of the monday morning podcast our little offshoot our little spinoff like back in the day you know when somebody would guest star like mork on happy days and they would just be like who is that fucking guy the studio audience loved him we should give that person their own show well you know what dreams really do happen in hollywood and they also happen <laughs> in the podcasting world because our own nia <laughs> our own beautiful lovely nia we're doing a nia log because Yay. because your, your fucking podcast room is still gutted because oh, we're waiting God. for the mortgage company right because yes. they, they took our money away because they, they, they didn't trust that we were going to. We got the money from the insurance and then the mortgage company had to take the money. That's right. Because they want to make sure that we were actually going to put it into the house so right. we can go down to the fucking. And distribute it IHOP. as they see fit. Cock yeah. suckers. Yeah. All right. Well, this is. Um, <laughs> but it's been a good night. And I, yeah, I know you don't watch sports, but the uh, I, I, I mentioned not, but... I mentioned on the podcast mm -hmm. that the Celtics have fucking hot. <laughs> We're old. We're an old ass team. Last year, what the Celtics did last year, taking the Heat to seven games, uh -huh. was was incredible, man. I was just like, these guys are winning like games they should not be winning. Just fucking desire, all right. Mm -hmm. And now this year, I'm like, all right, we lost uh, old Twinkle Toes there, whatever the fuck his name is. I'm not a big basketball guy. We lo <laughs> we lost him down in Miami. I'm like, now we're really fucking old. And we get Jason Terry in replacement, and that fucking Rondo goes down. I'm like, we're finished. We're going to get pounded by the Knicks. And the Knicks go up three games to none. And you have to win four out of seven. So if you win four in a row, you get swept. Mm -hmm. And if you get swept, that means one, t one thing. Your team is a bunch of bitches. 
It's not true, but that's what people say. So, like, right now, there's a lot of, like, Laker fans right now that are probably feeling that. And I feel sorry for them that, you know, people are probably saying that about their team. And it's not true. Do you feel sorry for them? Do They're probably remember? being called a bunch of swept bitches. And, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of love was shown to Boston over the last few weeks. So I'm going to show a little love to the Laker fans and say, uh, you know, I, I feel bad for you. Okay. And if I could somehow get you a coupon to go get you some Botox. Oh, you're so patronizing. So nobody could see your brow furrowing. I would fucking do it. I'd do it in a second. So the Celtics win one game. Because mm -hmm. we're the fucking Celtics, and you don't sweep us. Love when somebody talks shit after the victory who doesn't even watch the sport. It's been, yeah, now, it's I'm standing up now. It's supposed to be the basketball. Neolog, but i got to get this shit in. Now we fucking beat the Knicks again. <laughs> it's three games to two. We beat them in the fucking alleged Mecca, whatever the fuck that means. I remember, it's a gathering place for people to come and beat the fucking Knicks. <laughs> we beat the Knicks. We beat them again. Now you're it's 3-2. So you're three standing. Three to two. We're going back to fucking Boston. Your big forehead is sweaty. You're no, it's because really, I, really, uh... I just worked out. Because <laughs> I just worked out. That's what I did. I work out. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't think, I, I just don't think we got enough to beat those guys. But like, just the fact that you know we're making them nervous. Because we fucking came back against those goddamn Yankees. Oh, yes, we did. They were up three games to none. That's when we first met. Remember that? Came back four games Straight? Yes, I remember. We do that to their base baseball team and then their basketball team. It's fucking tremendous. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a neolog, everybody. Yeah. You, you never fucking know it. <laughs> that three minutes of shit talking. Oh, there's Standing a bunch of women. Around. Bunch of women right now going, oh, my God, just shut up and let her talk. Including me. Oh, oh ooh. <laughs> Wasn't that a little touche fucking tone? <laughs> Including me. Hmm. All right, let's get right down to it. Now, let, uh, on Monday's podcast, um, I was talking about the, uh, which is really a fucking old story at this point, maybe is the uh, first uh, uh, basketball player, athlete, whatever, to come out and say that, that, that he was gay. Mm -hmm. And actually, Martina Navratilova said, uh, just a goddamn minute, <laughs> just a goddamn minute. I came out in the 80s when yeah. they could yell homophobic stuff at me and uh, while they sold Cheerios. There's been a couple others, uh, mostly women. There was a woman on the NBA who came out as well. but this Women is don't play in the NBA. This was she grabbing one. towels for the men that play in that league? The WNBA, oh, the w excuse me. Oh, that doesn't count. Oh, shut up. Really? So anyway, wait a minute, was, wait a minute, was, wait a minute. Name, first... name one team in the WNBA. Okay. Uh, name. <laughs> that doesn't mean that it's not valid just because I can't name it. The I'm Colorado not a cleavage. They, not... they, they, <laughs> they've won You're the first dick. six years. Such a dick. Um, that's not true. No, but just because I can't name it doesn't mean anything. But I'm the not a Memphis. Person. Anyway, menstruators. there's been other, the Memphis menstruators. <laughs> I can't name, there's the, there's the L.A. Sparks, there's the... Anyway, uh, there's been other professional athletes who have come out, so he's not necessarily the first, but he's the first because it's the NBA, and so it's, what do you it's think? a wider audience. What do, you, what do you think about it? Should he have, should he have kept his, uh, his little uh, dilly-dallyings dallyings alone? <laughs> I'm trying to say it without cursing. No, I think it's great that he came out. It's a it's a big deal for for the sports world, no, especially the NBA. Now, so, the, someone in the NFL will follow suit. Maybe not yeah. right away, but soon. Well, I, I've always I'm said predicting. that I, I wanted it to be the most manly, the dude that all the homophobic guys, not all, not every sports bar is homophobic, but there's a lot of them, right, right, just the ones who already have his jersey. So who? And so I who want them to be, be wearing it. Who who would that be though? But the most manliest dude in the yeah. NFL. And, well, or NFL or NBA. I was talking NFL. Well, who's the most manly? Aren't they all pretty manly? Well, if I had Supposedly. my choice, mm -hmm. if I, I've it always like been a Tom fan Brady. of beards. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Tom Brady's not considered the most manliest guy. Everybody calls him a pretty boy. Who would it be? I don't know. Just, just, yeah. just one of those fucking, you know what I mean, one of those fucking guys. And I'm just trying to get to the joke here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, they're they're like... going to be standing there in the fucking sports bar with sure. that jersey on. Right. And now they're going to look like his girlfriend because well, they're wearing his jersey. Why would they look like his girlfriend? Little boyfriend. You know what I mean. <laughs> because in high school when you date, all the ladies, when they were banging the quarterback, whoever was banging it, got to, got to walk around wearing his jacket. And they pulled the sleeves up like an 80s comic. And that's what I was trying to fucking get to. I see. But this isn't about me, although it has been for fucking seven minutes. I mean. Here's my thing. I don't think it's any big deal, but what, what, what about the showers? What about Should the showers? Should he be allowed <laughs> to go into the showers? I said. Because what? I, Why wouldn't he be know, allowed to? I'll, allowed to, if he didn't try to make any sort of moves, he's not going to now. That's such a like, that's such a knee jerk 
fucking homophobic, ridiculous reaction. Oh, God, now that I know that you're gay, you're going to be looking at me and you're going to want to try to rape me. It's like if I didn't try to fucking rape you I'm not before, talking about that. Now. I'm talking. So that's bullshit. No, that's not. That's no. nonsense. It isn't nonsense. It is. It's like this knee-jerk ridiculous reaction feeling like i'm not saying that he can't fucking shout first of all so why did you all i up? did was i asked a fucking question why are you and yelling? all you fucking jerk offs immediately just you're yelling? such a fucking homophobic he should have to pay a cover charge oh jesus a cover charge all those shredded dudes fucking abs and all that dicks down to the floor this is what the fuck he's into we can look at that for free that'd be like me for free that would be like me fucking I get to shower, like I come out and just say that, oh, what, I, just, what if I came out and said I was gay? Can I then go fucking shower with a bunch of Victoria's Secret? Fucking, that doesn't make sense. You wouldn't have been able to, to before, so, yeah. That's, no, I'm just you... saying, you don't get to shower with the thing you want to fuck oh, without God. paying. You got to take somebody to a dinner. <laughs> oh, is that what you're getting at? <laughs> I'm fucking around. For Christ's sake, I'm funny. You know what, somebody's going to chop that up and I'm going to have to make an apology, but I don't have are. to. Who am I going to apologize to? Fucking FruitLoops.com? Who the hell do I have on this? I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. You know what it was? I was trying not to say stamps.com. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to have to erase this fucking podcast. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? Fru I told you to watch that. Fruit Loops. I told you to watch that. <laughs> no, Fruit Loops is my go-to product. I already said Cheerios. Now, I always go with now, cereal. You don't think now so? Now it's different. Now it's different. <laughs> oh, go fuck yourself. I've said a long time ago how I feel about the gays and the community that they live in. Which is what? Would I you think, like to reiterate, reiterate I think, for I think us? years from now they're going to look back on this and see the, see the way gays were treated. And they're going to look at it the same way as like when you used to stone somebody because they were a witch. Yes. I'm just having fun with this shit. Right. Give me a break. You don't think he's fucking psyched standing next to Kobe? <laughs> oh my God. Stop! He is, <laughs> he's the best basketball player. He's standing next to me. You are ridiculous. Why wouldn't he look? He's been looking. He's been looking. All right. Because well, he's been thing. gay this entire right. wait, wait. time. Well, what so if, okay, okay. Now, like... now we're getting somewhere. So he's been looking. Hypothetically, he's uh, been I mean, looking. I'm just saying. I mean, maybe Shh. he hasn't, but. No, no, no. Let me back into this corner for a second so we can have a little fun. Why am I here? So he's been looking, all right? <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Yes. If, if I'm standing around, mm -hmm. all right, a bunch of naked women, and I've been looking, I'm called a creep. Get out of this locker room. <laughs> you creep. You creep. It's like, what do you think? I'm going to rape you? I'm just looking at your little bush over there. That's all I'm doing. It's really. How really come really I can't do same. that? How come I can't do that? It's not the same. Why can't I go shower with the ladies? <laughs> How come I can't do that? This is, this is reverse uh, fucking <laughs> whatever it is. If he gets to shower with the fellas... Well, huh? he probably won't now. He knows how people feel. No, I'm he'll, probably, he'll probably purposefully separate himself because he doesn't want people to feel uncomfortable. He'll no, I think, I think, I think what he did was own. great. I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun. Yes. For all you cunts out there who are actually taking this shit seriously, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, <laughs> I don't. I got to no, be honest with you. It's a I thought thing that he did. It was great. It's great. It took a lot of balls. It did. It took a lot of fucking balls to do to do what he did, especially when it seems like that's a sport where, oh, his... I don't know, because you got all those guys, you know, random tweets and other kind of bullshit. You know, it's such a, you know, masculine, all the, the world of sports anyway, when it comes to men's sports, is seen as a very masculine, you've got to be a certain kind of guy, a tough guy, a strong guy, a guy that's not afraid of pain. Who's gonna go out there and just you know right, like get Chris, brutalized? And when, when, when Chris Bosh cried after they lost the the, <laughs> the championship, he got a ton oh, of shit for it. He collapsed to the ground and cried it out. And when then, they won? When they lost? Oh, when they lost? Well, yeah, it's fucking. He, he had a lot no, into no. it, right? You know, you just said, well, he put yeah. a lot of emotion into it. Why wouldn't you? But yeah, but, but because you, but you cry, you're seen as weak. Because we're guys. Yeah, yeah, what you're exactly. supposed to do is take that ball of sadness <laughs> and stick it next, add it to the big ball of sadness in your uh -huh, chest. Right. And, and one, do what with it? one day you're out there with the hedge clippers <laughs> when you're like 55 and you just drop and that's it. Mm. You guys cry it out. Right. I heard you keep your memories in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's a uh, wonderful thing that he did. But it's one of those things where now that he's done it, it's amazing. I need to read that Sports Illustrated article. That's when he officially came out because supposedly it's a great article. But I guess what people feel even though it's amazing, and I don't think anyone is discounting him from it unless they are, you know, feel weird about an NBA player coming out, is that while it's amazing and great, they feel like it's going to take a quote-unquote bigger star to really affect I thought the that masses. was annoying. I thought that that was annoying, they and feel. they stole that guy's fucking thunder. Well, I he had the fucking balls you know what? to come out. And I, and, and absolutely, but the thing is, it's kind of like with AIDS, right? So everyone had a certain Jesus. feeling about, well, this is, I'm, I'm going to make this parallel because it makes I sense. I hope so. 
when when people were talking about AIDS in the 80s and 90s, there was a certain conception of who got AIDS. It was a gay man who was sleeping around or whatever it is. But when Maddie Johnson, a huge, respected, revered, loved athlete, not straight. Not in Boston. Not in Boston. It doesn't matter. I'm joking. I'm joking. Jesus. When he came out, <laughs> that for a lot of people, maybe not normalize it, but put a face on it was sort of like, wow, this is the kind of person who could be susceptible. So maybe it's not something outside of me, and I don't know about this, and that's those people that do those things. That's somebody like me, a straight person who has a family, blah, 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 who was careless. This is they how you get AIDS. The, and that's what changed for a lot of people, that, that face of AIDS. So it wasn't just gay guys sneaking around in the alley. It became a straight guy. Up at a truck stop. Well, yeah, but it also became I a straight, very masculine, like I said, revered hero I to a that. lot of people. And so it's sort of like, oh, wow, we're all vulnerable I if we're not I, careful. So what people are saying is, I even though it's, I, I, I get it, I'm listening to you. <laughs> so even though Jason Collins coming out is a huge thing and no one should discount it, there are people who think, while that's amazing, they need a straight guy to come out. If there was a huger, that would maybe affect... If it was a Kobe, it's Kobe Bryant is clearly not gay. Let the but, guy yeah. have his fucking moment. It was his moment. Absolutely. He fucking had the balls to do it. And then fucking uh, TwinkleToes.net has to come out and be like, well, actually, okay, that was good, but we want somebody more high profile. There's fucking but assholes. That's not, but that's they're assholes. You're, but that's not what they're saying. They're not taking it away from him. But they're yeah, just, they are. But no, but they're, they're, they're taking saying, their own like, selfish fucking agenda that they want something more. No, they're looking at it as, while well, this is wonderful, I wonder, though, if this is really going to have the impact on the sports. Okay, can I get. Can can I, can I get a word in for a that second? something like a Magic Johnson would have. That's 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 all they're saying. Can I get a word in? No one's taking anything away from them. They just don't know if that's gonna erase quote unquote homophobia from the it. sports world because it's not somebody like a a Shaq or a you oh know Kevin God. Garnett or a, you know whatever. Now let me okay. Now let's say you win an Oscar. Okay, you win an Oscar, and then some women's group comes up right as they're handing you that fucking trophy. They go, you know, this is all well and good, but now do you feel like you got your moment? Well, no, I wouldn't feel that well, way. Well, thank you. Defense rest. But I, I'm not... I'm, I'm saying it was... But let, it's, let it's, the, it's, it's a valid perspective, but it's not taking, it's not taking anything away from him. But, I mean, I, I, you know what, though? Can I you do, give the I guy a week? Saying. Can he have no, a week? I know what you're saying, because anytime anyone makes a big announcement like this, there's the people who feel that he's a hero, and then there's the naysayers. He's not so a person to like, them. You know, he's this thing. He's this thing to throw against the wall to continue fuck. Give the guy his fucking week. He had the balls to come out. Yeah. This is his fucking week. And he ought to be able, you know, he finally gets the shit off his chest. He can finally just, you know, relax, be who the fuck he is, not have to worry about somebody saying something and, and whatever, whatever the fuck it is mm -hmm. that you have to go through, that horrific fucking life that you shouldn't have to go through. You ought to be able to just be who the fuck you are. And to just, after he fucking, the second he comes out, they have these douchebags be like, you know, that's all well and good. He should have taken his big fucking hand and mushed their faces back behind the curtain for a second. I don't think they mean anything bad by it. I think they're just, they're being very realistic about the world that we live in. And the reality of it is, while you've got somebody who's done a very brave, awesome thing, sometimes it takes a, a bigger celebrity That's or whatever to make, taking to make away a from bigger his, can, can he have his fucking week? That's all I'm saying. I know. I know. I get what you're saying. But they also have a, a valid point. I mean, do you think Jason Collins coming out is really going to affect the way people see? I don't know why, but see? you are driving me up the fucking wall right now. Because I, you're not listening to me. No, because I said like five minutes ago, I said if you won an Oscar and as you won it, some woman's group went up, you know, this is all well and good, but blah, 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 and stole your thunder, you would be pissed. I would be. And, you, and you, you believe that women should continue to be advanced, but can you have your fucking moment? I think that they robbed the guy. I mean, it didn't happen, but I think by them saying shit like that, it, I, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, what, what's it the takes, word? It not not crass. It's, 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 yeah, it's, I know, I understand what you're saying. But it's not a classy you, fucking thing. But do Give you, the guy a couple of but days. But do you huh? think this man, Jason Collins, coming out at the time he's coming out at this point in his career with his, his standing in the NBA, do you think that it's going to seriously impact the way people see gays in professional sports like basketball or football, et cetera? Do you really I, think it's going to make people be like, oh, wow. I, I, well, can't, gay, I, can't, speak, no I can't speak do for you, other people. But, do you, but, that's, but that's the question. Can I, can I answer the question? Here's the, here's the thing. You said all that shit about Magic Johnson and this put a face on it and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. that, is the, that is the legend now that it's happened. The same way like when Nirvana's Nevermind came out, everybody's like, you just knew the second you heard it, there was a change in the air. That's all fucking, that's the legend. Okay. And I've always said that I heard it. I didn't get it. 
and I was waiting for the next Skid Row album. I didn't get I didn't get fucking Nirvana. Oldie. I I wasn't old. I was I was starting to become old. Like my like my generation was being passed on. Like I was not grunge. I was fucking metal. Right. So I didn't get them and how great the musicians they were until they did their unplugged. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, these guys and they did all these covers and shit. And then I worked my way back. And as I worked my way back, the whole thing was over when Kurt killed himself. But that whole Magic Johnson thing was first thing people said was he's gay. Right. He's gay, and all this shit came out. Oh, look at him kissing Isaiah on the cheek before the finals. Right. Oh, right there. There you go. That mm-hmm. They said that shit. Mm-hmm. And then when they, if people who, like, were saying, no, no, Magic is still straight, then what they just said was, well, I'm not Magic Johnson. I'm not fucking six women at a time. I'm fine. So, and I think that's what most people do because it's scary that you're looking at something that could kill you, and you're thinking in the back of your head, all these skanks you banged without a condom – you know, laying there in bed going, this could happen to me too. I'm, there's, that takes a, a certain level of fucking maturity that most people don't have, especially so you think, when you're younger. Okay, so you think the, the the appreciation for Jason Collins, even though he's getting so many accolades, the, the real appreciation is not going to come until later? No, 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 no. What I was saying is what that, what, whatever that fucking website was, I thought it was uncool that they said, this is great, but, you know, this is all well and good. But I, think, I thought they were on the moment. I, I think it's fucking phenomenal that he did it. And I hope more people do it and everybody just fucking relaxes and it's no big deal. Right. Well, I think that's that's absolutely 100 percent true. But I think they were just sort of. Has any of this been funny? Realistic. This sounds like a fucking town meeting. <laughs> but but they're, they're just being realistic about what the impact could be. And no one can really know until, I don't know, a month, a year, three years from now. How come they won't so, interview anybody who doesn't give a fuck like me? I could give a flying. Because that's not interesting. I could give a flying. You don't care. That's not interesting. Fuck. About what you do off the court. Do you want court. me to read the comment unless, that which, which, which started and, this whole thing? Unless, unless you're killing people. Do you want me to read this? No, nah, I don't comment? care. I don't care. Oh, now you don't care. No, no. I'd you like you. want me to find it and read it. Huh? Now you don't care. Well, we already discussed it, didn't we? Oh, I guess so. Okay. But let's actually bring some sort of comedy to this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got really mad at me last night. Yes. Before we went to bed. I'm not going to say who I was looking at either. All right? <laughs> yeah, but Out of protection. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened to me. Nia's fucking on her side trying to go to sleep, and I got the laptop, and I start doing the IMDB thing, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking. Huh. Yeah, she doesn't believe this. So I find IMDb. I find some stylet, right, and it says that, you know, she did a spread in Playboy. So I'm like, oh, really? Wow, well, I want to see her naked. So I go to click on images. I swear to God, I'm on Google Images, and... So the second I clicked on one of the naked pictures, this other window came up with somebody talking who I don't remember what they were saying, but you know. immediately assumed that I was watching porn. Because when you click on porn, that window that opens up behind those the window, webcams, those girls on the webcams, they pop up and they're like, hey, daddy. No, they don't. Da-da-da-da. They usually pop up and they go, ah, oh, yeah, fuck it. And you try to say, they go, what is it? first time you hear it, like, where's that voice coming from? Has somebody hacked into my computer and they're mocking the porn that I'm watching? And then you go, and it's just, oh, there's some fucking housewife sitting there yeah. with a pickle. A um, <laughs> couple of kids running around the background. It's a tough economy. Oh, God. So she immediately assumed that I was watching porno, and I was like, I wasn't. And I literally backtracked through the fucking thing. I backtraced it, and I showed you what I was watching. And, and I called you a fucking scumbag. Fucking scumbag, <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> and then here it is. It's like, you're watching porn, too, if you know that that happens. Well, so? Well, all right, then. But I'm not watching a fucking lion next to you in bed, you dirtbag, which you were. And well, you if I, if, no, if you were going if, to look at naked ladies on a computer next naked to what? me in bed, ladies, <laughs> <laughs> while lying in bed. So whether you're watching porn or not, I still stand by those harsh it's words. Playboy, I you. it's artistic. Oh, please. They don't show the clam there. <laughs> <laughs> they just show. A nice little, uh, you know. Yeah, and I heard that pop up muff. and that breathy little, oh, my God, this and that. Hey, 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 hey. And I knew what you were doing, and I fucking screamed at you. You honestly you deserved think. It. You fucking deserved right, wait a minute, wait a minute. To lie next to me and be looking at porno <laughs> while in bed with your future wife, you fucking scumbag. I don't take any of it back. Wait a minute. You're a dirtbag, and you deserve <laughs> To be yelled at. Do you honestly think? In life and on the podcast. You know what's funny is we got such a great mattress here that I think I could actually rub one out. 
without you noticing. That's, that's nice. That's what they that's should nice. do. That's what they should that's do in that commercial. Nice. You know that commercial where they have the wine on one side and the guy's jumping up and down? They should have some guy with his hand inside his I'm fucking sure jam jams, fucking jerking like this and looking at the camera, giving the thumbs up. And yeah, as well. I don't think you just say, you just see the bedspread fucking. Yeah, yeah, we get it. So yeah, you just so have that's to what you think I was doing. That's that is what you were doing. Maybe you weren't looking at actual pornography I was, videos. It wasn't pornography. It was a nude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was naked pictures of another fucking woman. You got caught, right. and I screamed at you, and you fucking deserved it. All right. You called me a lot of harsh words. Well, you deserved it to do it while you're lying in bed next to me. What kind of man are you? <laughs> Would you take on to that level? <laughs> It might be the quote of the podcast. Oh, I just wanted to look at this naked girl, and then and, and what happens? I was tempted. And it got found out. I was on IMDb, and then this oh, temptress with, with her photos. IMDb, and what IMDb had a link to her right. fucking naked videos, and there's right. some other fucking pop-ups that come up. You were caught, and here's you're Here's a move for you guys. And you're trying to make it funny. For all the guys listening right now, oh, here's the move in this moment. Yeah. Hey, if I want to look at a naked broad on my goddamn computer... All right, I'm going to do it. You absolutely can. But well, to do right, it then. while you're sharing our fucking would-be marital bed, I'm not going to stand for that. I'm going to call you names. I'm going to shame you. And that's how it is. It's impossible to shame me after my childhood. <laughs> you're shamed. That's why we're talking about it right now. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to, have to bring up something fucking funny. Mm -hmm. Sacrificing me. Don't anyway, give me that fucking look. Give me a So break. that's how it is. Yes, I looked at a fucking naked actress. All right? Uh-huh. There you go. And I enjoyed it, and I'll do it again. No, you didn't, because I screamed at you, and it well, took all the joy enjoy. away from, from you. There was a lot of shame. <laughs> no, I, I was so, like, so, you know what it was? I wasn't prepared, and then that lady's voice, ah, yeah, fuck it, yeah. And then you fucking rolled over, and you were just fucking in my grill. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there just stuttering, trying to shut it off. <laughs> I couldn't find the mute button. It's unreal. Yeah, well. You don't do that. That's rude. Hey, it, I didn't set out to do it. It's the internet. Eventually, you're going to end up at a you fucking didn't naked set picture. Out to do it, you lied here with the specific intent of looking at a woman naked no, I on the internet. Yes, you did. No, you I said, didn't. oh, I want to see those pictures, and you clicked on it. No, that's not what I and did. And what you didn't uh, expect. You start in the middle of the story. What you didn't expect uh, was there to be a pop up break. to yeah. appeal to the kind of perverts over oh, there I that you are money. and I to come rat home, you I out. Buy stuff. I put food that's in the fridge. That's what happened. I can't look at one fucking broad. Let me tell you, you something. You absolutely can look at you yeah, on the road. I swear to God, I'm going to take one of these pillows and I'm going to put it over your face but until you shut it. But to lie next to me in bed and be looking at some naked women and get found out like that, yeah, you're going to get called on it. What do you expect? I'm going to snuggle up tonight. Ooh, let's look at it together. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been one of the greatest fuck yous I've ever had. Fuck you. <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful. That was a thing. Of, you guys got to admit, when it comes to fucking just laying somebody out and laughing. Them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I have to tell you this. What? I didn't go. I didn't open my computer and be like, I'm going to look at this naked girl while you're laying next to me. Mm -hmm. I went on ID, IMDB. Mm -hmm. And I'm such a weak, pathetic person mm -hmm. that within three you seconds, are. I ended up on that. But that's not. I'm like one of those guys who's fucking did the crime. This is second degree. This isn't premeditated. I didn't fucking walk in there like, I'm going to look at this girl, okay? okay? I walked in, okay? I saw the gumballs <laughs> sitting there. Stomach was growling. I said, fuck it, I'm grabbing them, and I got caught. So, yes, I did rob the fucking store, but I wasn't sitting at home going, you know what I'm going to do today? All right? This I just throw a naked woman in there, and you have the fucking explanation. you were looking at, you knew who she was. You knew that she posed naked. You knew, because you know who this person is, all right, without going any further. So for you to sit here and try to act like, oh my gosh, I was just investigating someone's like acting history. Justin and Timberlake and showed Ricky, his fucking you know, wiener blah. on the goddamn internet. You'd look at it. What does that have to do with anything that we're talking about right now? Because you know what, you were right. You up, know what? You, were right. you know what? You know Can what? I finish? Is that Can I finish? Bro, you're trying to do Can that I classic, finish? you know, sort of. Can I finish? You were right up until three minutes ago. Throwing other subjects in there to try to throw me off base, but you're not going to do that, Playboy, because I'm smarter than you. All right. All right. Let's, not, let's not be quoting that. dialogue from a bad cop show. Yeah, you can do that, Playboy. Why don't you I put like your, little, Playboy. your little gumball fucking siren on top of your non-existent car? Listen to me. You were right up until three minutes ago. Which, which was now? Right? You know what you're doing? Now you're hamming it up. Oh, you're hamming am I it up. It yeah. Up in the podcast? You know what? That's Here we so go. different Here we from what go. usually <laughs> happens on the podcast. Right. You should have ended with "fuck you." Can you please do that again? No. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, there you go, people. That is the podcast. That's the Nia log. 
That's the Neil. All right, listen, I'm sorry that I looked at a uh, talented actress naked. You know, what do you want me to do? Talented actress? Huh? Will you shut up and stop outing the person? <laughs> you already fucking left like 90 clues. What is wrong with you? I didn't. Be mad at me. Don't be mad at her. I'm not mad at her. Okay. Well, then quit fucking doing that. All right. See, you keep, doing keep it, it again. Keep I'm it at me. No, I'm not. This is no, about her. Oh, this is about you. God. This is about you. And you I'm know what? This is what happens. You shit. know what? This this is what happens every night around eight o'clock and nine o'clock, and then she fucking drives me out of the house, and I go out and do stand up. Okay. Which are you going out? Yes, I am. And you can watch all your stupid. What was that? What was that fucking show you were watching? Which one? The show about the swimmer who doesn't get anything but swimming. What would Ryan Lochte do? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's, yes. ha he's hamming it up. He's is he? Yes. I don't know that he is. He's traveled the fucking world. He's won gold medals. No, Nia, no. Yeah, no. You, th you, you say like he's traveled the world and met with diplomats. He's traveled the world and jumped from pool to pool. He has met with diplomats. When he won a fucking gold medal, all of a sudden he get the key to the city. This guy's cut ribbons. He, okay, and he shakes yeah, hands. Yeah, he's, he's opened he zoos. The this guy's opened zoos. Okay, you, you're not that d He's not that dumb. Ugh. Ooh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, it's hot, and that's really all that matters. Okay, and now, now do I get upset that I'm sitting on a couch and you're sitting there looking at fucking... Oh, that's what you said the other night. You see this mm -hmm. look on your face, and I'm like, you're not enjoying this show? And you're like, no, I'm looking at those abs. Yeah, and if I was lying next to you looking at naked pictures or whatever of Ryan Lochte, then you would absolutely have something to say about it. So wait a but minute. But that's not what happened. No, no, no. I was watching a show. Well, okay, e. okay. So the bed bedroom is, is, is not cool. Yeah, the okay? bedroom is our fucking bedroom. It's where we... I know you what know, you do in a it's bedroom. A bedroom. It's a sacred space. Do you believe this shit, guys? It's a this? fucking would, would sacred you space. Okay? That a swell guy Can like me have would have to put swell. up with this shit? Can we not have the bedroom at least? Okay, but if, but if I did it in the living room, if I did it in the living room, that would have been okay? If I'm not in the bed with you, yeah, you're outside. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no bed in the living room. If I'm in the fucking living room, I can look at a picture of a naked woman on the computer. I, I swear, got no problem. With I it. just want okay. And then if I hit on the thing, and all of a sudden it goes, ah, yeah, fucking right there. Oh my god, you're not, gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna have a problem with that. Not in the living room, no. But while lying in bed next to me, that's a problem. I can live with that. So we're so we're absolutely. So I apologize. I didn't know that that was the rule. And once again, Nia, I was just looking at a fucking picture. All right, I'm a fucking guy. She's a naked woman. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do? Go. It's free! It's do? free! One click away! How do I resist? Do? As if you had no choice. I really don't. The way I'm wired, I don't. All right? Oh, please. I don't accept that. Oh, the fuck you. Wired. You want to, Nia? What the if there was. I'm what? Wired. Please. No, I don't accept really? that. Nia, what if there was a store you could just walk into and it was a bunch of free shoes? Are we in a store right now? Or Wait are we a in the fucking bedroom? It's a fucking metaphor. It doesn't matter. We're not talking about metaphors. We're talking about what actually happened. I'm talking about how you're wired versus how I'm wired. Okay. We're you're wired, wired to get you like stuff. You guys, you're into shit. You like hats. You like fucking shoes. If, if a free hat or a free pair hats. of shoes <laughs> was a click away, you'd fucking do that right in front of me in the bed. You would. A free and then I heard, and I'd hear somebody, oh, it's a tiny too, it's a too, and a fucking. Free hat is not the same as what you were doing. It's just not. The end. Yeah, and but you started not, to apologize you're not, you're not. for it, and now you're trying to backtrack. Because I was trying to fucking apologize, and you keep coming at me like a goddamn meerkat. I don't try to keep coming at you. You should keep trying to, like, excuse yourself for what you did, and you know that it's wrong. Listen, you know what? I know you think that you're doing some amazing shit here where you're just not backing down. Okay. Oh, God. First of all, what are you going to do to me, Nini? Huh? What are you going to do? Huh? Are you going to body slam me? I'm bigger than you. I already said I'll I have no problem I'll push you right off this fucking bed. Looking at porn or whatever it is that you do, I have no problem with that. But if you're lying in bed next to me, and then I and I and, I and I and I said okay, that, and I that's said a problem. I fucking said call okay. I said okay, and I said okay. So then we have nothing left to discuss. End of podcast. Why do women always take the ball and go home? <laughs> How old are you? There, I'm on that point. It's over. <laughs> end end of game. I won. <laughs> I'm going home. Huh? All right, whatever. All right, that was the podcast for this fucking. <laughs> Look at me, that self-satisfied laugh. All right, that's the that's the uh, Neolog this week. It's therapeutic. You, as you can see why uh, I don't have her on that much anymore. <laughs> I know, I'm never on anymore. It's because you're busy. Yeah, busy doing stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> not doing shit. Chastising you. All right, see ya. So, anyways, I went up to uh, see some family over the 4th of July to celebrate the birthday of this country. And... Um, as I'm driving up, 
I'm listening on the radio, and evidently I looked up the song on uh, on the internet. It's a uh, Carrie Underwood song. Who I don't I don't know what she is. I'm I'm guessing she's white because it sounded country, and she had a little twang in her voice. But I don't want to piss off any Koreans out there. She might have been Korean. <laughs> um, it's a song called Before He Cheats. So I'm driving along. And, you know, I'm driving my buddy's car. This is how I'm going to fucking defend myself, that I was on a radio station that was actually playing this. And I was just sort of clicking the uh, the pre-programmed radios fucking whatever. You know what I'm saying. I'm, I am feel like shit. Cut me some slack this week. So, anyways, this song comes on. And this, this Carrie Underwood chick is sitting there singing this song going, Right now, he's probably slow dancing, blah, blah, blah. Right now. And she's singing about her boyfriend. I got the lyrics right here. Right now, he's probably buying her some fruity little drink because she can't shoot whiskey. Right now, he's probably up behind her with the pool stick showing her how to shoot a combo. And then they go into the, the chorus, and she goes, and he don't know um, that I dug my keys into the side of his pretty little souped-up four-wheel drive, carved my name into his leather seats. I took a Louisville slugger to both headlights, slashed a hole in all four tires. And all I could think was, why don't you just break up with them, you dumb cunt? You know what I mean? What are you going to do? You're going to do all this shit, then he's going to get mad, and then what? You're going to make up after five days, and then you're going to blow him again? I hate this fucking song, and I'm going to tell you why, because it's I, I'm pretty sure it's a hit. It's on the radio, right? Uh, I don't know. And you, you know what I love about this is... People will listen to this song and they won't even question the rationale of what the fuck someone's doing in there because so many people in life, myself included, you 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 play you you like powerless in life. You just play the powerless card. You know? Just get out of the fucking relationship. I, I fucking hate this song. And this is one of these songs, too, where fucking women all get together and they start singing, I got to cut my teeth to the side of this car. You're all a bunch of dumb cunts. Okay? You're fucking stupid. Just break up with the guy. Just break up with him. Not even to mention the fact that now you're going out there and you're, you're, you're doing damage. You, you, I don't know. Is that a felony? It's not a felony. I don't know what it is. But it's just a classic thing where a woman would listen to that song and at no point would she ever think, hey, maybe I could get arrested for this. I am damaging somebody's property. No, you got a fucking vagina. You can just go out in broad daylight. You don't even have to wear a fucking mask. Do you know what I would have to do if I wanted to go out and go fuck up somebody's car? I would have to wait. for. First of all, I'd have to make sure I had an alibi. It'd be like I was killing somebody. I had to make sure somebody could cover for me and say that I was fucking somewhere, right? I had to put on some goddamn cat suit and a fucking a mask, right? Like I'm in that dead president's movie. And all I would be able to get, I'd be able to get off one quick hit, right? One quick hit, unless I want to start carving it up like a pussy, right? But if I, if I really was going to go out there and smash somebody's headlights, I could hit one, and the second the car alarm goes off, I have to fucking take off and then run home, get out of my little fucking, fucking, uh, <laughs> little cat suit, and then try to put on my pajamas so when the cops show up, because you know they're going to find some sort of fucking fingerprint, I got to act like I'm not out of breath, like I actually have been sitting there for fucking eight hours watching TV. I don't know, I just, I can't stand, you know, it just reminds me of when that movie uh, Fatal Attraction came out, right? And the amount of women who would just sit there and, you see that movie? Huh? Yeah? That's what you get. That's what you get. You know, there's no thought of, like, this bitch put a rabbit in, in, in boiling water. There's none of that. Women, they're, they're out of their fucking minds. But that's not even the point of this. My point of the Carrie Underwood song, it actually made me feel like a loser. Because the amount of fucking times, I mean, I'm going out and fucked up somebody's car, but the amount of times. You know what is that song? Is that song? It's a powerless song. That's what the fuck it is. And I went through the whole lyrics to see if she breaks up with them in the end. And there's sort of an ambiguous line in the end where she goes, because uh, the next time he cheats, oh, you know, it won't be on me. So that's sort of ambiguous, because it could mean because I broke up with them, or it could be because he doesn't want to get his truck fucked up. So I don't know. You know, I, I just... It just fucking annoys me. That song just annoyed the shit out of me. On on, on both levels, where you, you got somebody... It's like, just break up with the guy. 
and your solution is, you know something? If a girl ever fucking cheated on me, that that I would break up with them. I'm not saying I wouldn't flip out and uh, give them a good fucking trashing verbally, but I would never go and like, uh, you know, throw all their clothes out in the front lawn and burn them. You know? Why wouldn't I do that? I don't. I don't know why. I think a lot of it has to do because I'd be fucking worried I'd get arrested for damaging property. Why do women have an exemption from damaging property? I don't understand it. If a woman sat there smashing up somebody's car in broad daylight because the guy cheated on him, people would be laughing. I would be laughing. Everyone, it would, it's, it's a comedy. It's just hilarious. But if the exact same scenario was going down and a guy did it, it, it'd be the classic, you know, the cops come and they put you in that little, you get tasered and they mush your face into the fucking pavement. I don't know. I get it. Women have to carry a kid around in their goddamn stomach for nine months. But I don't think that gives you the right to go out and attack somebody's Fiero. I really don't. You know? So why don't you guys just fucking relax? All right? You bunch of goddamn psychos. You know, with your I'm on my period excuse, so three weeks a month you're out of your fucking mind. I think if a girl goes, even if you were cheating on a girl or on a woman, right, and she fucks up your car, I really think you ought to be able to go up to her and give her a nice fucking two-piece combination to the goddamn fucking cabbage. What do you think about that, right? Just fucking just hook off on that fucking hair-teased head of lettuce on the top of her fucking shoulders, right? What would you go with? I'm really going to alienate a lot of my fans on this one. <laughs> and I want you to know that most of this is not me advocating punching a woman in the face. Most of this is I can't fucking sit in this stupid hotel room anymore. I can't fucking do it. I've had the goddamn do not disturb light on for like four days. They probably think I overdosed in here. I'm really big on that. Don't clean up the room. Beat it. You know, you got to come in every three days and change the sheets like I'm royalty. I change the sheets like fucking once every three weeks. Maybe. That's only if that's only if they're white. And I can tell how filthy they are. That's right, wrinkle your nose up, you fucking pompous broads. That's how I live my life. Um, Jesus, why am I attacking women? I don't know why. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, if you if you could punch a woman in the face, if you allowed two punches, what would you go with, okay? Would you go classic? Would you set up the overhand right with a jab? Would you actually waste a jab you know, waste a jab? Would you go... <laughs> this is just evil. All right, I got to get off this fucking subject. I don't know. That song just annoyed me. Um, I hate those fucking songs when women just, just openly talk about how they're going to go out and destroy a guy's fucking property rather than break up with him. You know, and it's considered some sort of justification. You know, rather than looking inward going, you know, maybe I'm a bad judge of character. What sort of qualities am, am I looking for in somebody and I'll date that? I mean, didn't the fact that the guy had a souped-up four-wheel drive truck didn't that give it a, didn't that give it away on any fucking level, huh? And his, I mean, a souped-up four-wheel drive truck, Carrie Underwood, you dumb fucking. What else did he have, huh? A, 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 a fucking earring hanging down with a lightning bolt on the side of it. Ah, this fucking song stinks. This is one of the, you know why I, I hate this song? This is, and I'm going to do my whole podcast on this fucking song. This is going to be one of those fucking songs when I'm the, on the road and I'm hating my life, you know, and I just don't want to go back to the hotel room and be lonely and I'm going to go out to a bar and that song is going to come on and fucking four fucking twats with their ear piercing, I'm singing and I'm drunk, high pitched voices are going to start singing every fucking word of that song like they're, they're like these fucking cunt badasses. Okay, and I'm done. All right, I'm done with that. I'm done with that fucking... Oh, Jesus Christ, that fucking song annoyed me. Oh, by the fucking way. Not by the way, people. This is by the fucking way. Which you know that I'm about ready to tell you some shit that I believe in, baby. Uh, I'm, at, I'm at Logan Airport. Edward Lawrence Logan Airport. I finally learned that. that Logan Airport is, is named after Eddie Lawrence Logan. It was some sort of fucking uh, military person who fought in the Spanish-American War and that they used to have a statue of him before they had to make the airport even bigger because people out-fucked it, you know? So I go there, okay, and I go through security, and they got the giant fucking microwave they want me to stand in with my legs spread doing the Jay-Z symbol, right? Or the Sammy Hagar from the 5150 tour, depending on what generation you are, depending what what side of the tracks you're from. All right, this podcast is for everybody. 
Um, I'm sure someone in the village people did it. There, you see that? Reached out to the gay community. Swell guy. Pat myself on the back here. <laughs> so anyways, I say I'm not fucking, you know, I'm opting out. All right, sir, can you go stand over there? I don't even like standing over there. I used to work in a fucking dental office when I would take an x-ray of somebody's tooth. One little fucking thing, and we put that camera right up to the side of their jaw. We put a lead vest over all their vitals right down to their dick or hoo-ha. And then I left the fucking room, stood behind a wall that had lead in it, and I pressed the fucking button. Now I'm supposed to stand there, you know, like I'm just going into prison. They do everything, but you have you bend over and spread your fucking ass cheeks. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing it. And I know what people are saying. Well, Bill, you talk on a cell phone, right? That's fucking radiation. You fly in an airplane, right? That's fucking radiation. I understand that I am getting radiated throughout the course of the day and the way I live my life. I understand that. Okay? But I don't need to get extra radiated. So if there's a way to opt out. Believe me, if there was a way to opt out of flying on a fucking airplane, a, a, a viable way. Aside from just saying, fuck this business, I'm going to buy an old bus and just drive around, and that'll be my miserable life. I would do it. But the fact that I can just stand there for an extra 5, 10, 15 fucking minutes, you know, and rather than stand in that microwave, I could just go over and just have some, you know, sort of cute male person pat down my ass with the back of his hands. <laughs> Do you have any sensitive areas? Uh, I would much rather do that, okay? And then, you know, people have given me shit about it, saying it's stupid, it's fucking pointless, and blah, 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 blah. Well, so anyway, anyways, I'm at Eddie Lawrence Logan Airport, Edward Lawrence, and um, I'm standing there, I'm waiting, you know, and whenever you want to get fucking patted down, they wait for fucking ever. They make it take extra long. I'm convinced that they do it just so you just say, fuck it, I'm going to go into the toaster, all right? But I don't give a shit. I always get to the airport early. Because I know the game that they're running over there. Oh, the lovely Nia, everybody. How are you? I'm good. Come over here, talking to the microphone. How you been? We couldn't hear you last week. Oh, I've been great. Thanks for asking. Great to be back. Are you reading from a script? I am. <laughs> oh, who just woke up? I am great. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Where's the real Nia? Who is this sexy robot that was replaced? Listen to this shit. I'm telling this story about, you know, I always opt out of doing the Jay-Z thing where they radiate everything but your fucking taint. At the airport. Jay-Z? Yeah, you know, you fucking, you have your hands like the Hova sign? Oh, God. Isn't, isn't that what yeah. it is? Yeah. So um, I'm standing there waiting, right? And I'm staring down some bald-headed douche who knows. First of all, they always have some chick there, and she just goes, you know, what do they, what do they, what do they say? Uh, male, oh, what is what they say? Male pat-down or whatever they say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Male yeah. support, uh -huh. aisle <laughs> five, support. whatever the fuck they say. And it's typical chick voice where it, it, can, it can only carry. What, like, what, is, what is that? You guys aren't good at yelling. Yes, we are. I yell at you. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. No. like no one hears it. No. no one hears it. All right, go ahead. You know, I got the microphone away. Yell male support aisle four. Yell it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it some. Male support aisle four. That's good. That has a sense of fucking urgency. <laughs> All right, then you know what? They don't put their fucking heart in it. They just go, male, pack that out. Oh, because say, you can't Hell. be screaming like there's something going down or whatever. Yeah, but you got to communicate. You got to communicate to those bald fatties. Guys down there are going to put the back of their hands on my ash there. Well, they, they, don't, they don't get it. They have a whole little system that they're talking to each other. That you, you, you Whose have... fucking side do you want here? Not yours, obviously. All right, well, listen to this shit. Listen to this shit. Wait a second. Let me, so let me get they, to the point. Go, hey, go, go get, time, time out. Time out. Get another microphone. Get another microphone. Hang on a second. We're actually going to pause the podcast. Pause the podcast. Pause the podcast. All right, through the magic of hitting pause. <laughs> well, something I never do on this thing. I actually hit pause there. Uh, so anyways, this is the deal. So I'm, I'm going through security. Yeah. After all these people ridicule me, like, oh, you're already getting radiation anyways, man. So why not stand there and have literally have your entire body, but your tank, lit up, right? So I'm fucking standing there, and this lady is going, hey, fucking, you have male support out for? You know, and I'm like, they're not hearing you. They're not hearing you. And then she goes, sir, could you stand over there? I go, I'm going to stand right. I need to watch my wallet. Okay, you can stand right there. All right. So anyways, this fucking this Asian kid comes up. Fat Asian kid, one of the rare ones. Why? Why like, is like, that relevant? Like, 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 like a white elephant. Why is that relevant? It's because not Asian that people rare. are in great shape. They eat great. I don't know what it is. They're in fucking awesome shape. And every certain... once in a while, you see one. You see a fat Asian. You're like, holy shit, right? 
I don't mean like he's a fucking did it on purpose to sumo wrestle. This is just a fat kid. Sumo. 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 Samoan. Whatever the fuck it is. This fat Asian kid comes up. Not and relevant to the story. But it is. On. For the comedy, it is. Oh, I see. All right. Sorry. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I trashed waspy fucking white people on this. Thing. Oh, you did? Did you talk about Nantucket? Yes, I did. Oh. Ahoy. Ahoy. <laughs> yeah, see, you just hate him. And it's, and it's wrong. I don't hate anybody. I don't have hate in my heart. All right, shut up. Listen. <laughs> so this, 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 this person, this fat kid, comes up, yeah. all right, and the lady, and the lady just goes, hi, hi. he couldn't even hear her, he goes, he's like, what, she goes, hi, hi. he's like, what, and I, I want to be like, how old are you, that's what the fuck she's trying to say, mm -hmm. and he goes, 13, and she goes, all right, come over here, and she had him go through the old school one, yeah, so basically, you want me to stand in something that could kill a 13 year old, <laughs> that's what the fuck I'm supposed to do, you know what, on the way, wait, on the way out, on the way back, Twice, two times, two times that, four times a month. I'm gonna stand in this thing that can kill a 13 year old. It can't. I'm sure it can't kill it. Maybe it, like can affect his like um, puberty or his growth or something. Yeah. I think Maybe women it can affect his dick. I have a dick too. What? Cause my dick's old now. Yeah, your it dick is old. It's already, <laughs> it's already grown. Your balls well, so are like down between your knees. The pubes. No protected. one cares about it anymore. Like it's just kind of like out of commission. I think women can avoid that full body thing by saying that they're pregnant. And they won't let you go. They won't make you go in there if you say that you're pregnant. Oh, exactly. You I can, think you can always. You, women always have the "I'm just a girl" excuse That's to not get out I'm of just a girl, horrific I'm things that guys pregnant. have to do. But stick with the thing here. If that fucking thing, how old are you? Thirteen. It get might over here. Prevent if, him from getting like chest hair or something. But you, yeah, you're old. Like they don't care about you. It's the youth of tomorrow that we're concerned about. Oh, there you go. I sat there and I. I you're almost, out of the game, I, old man. I almost. <laughs> I'm not even, this isn't about me whether I, I feel like I'm old or not. I know I'm old. I'm talking about <laughs> suburban. Um, I almost high-fived myself. I actually, I bursted out laughing, extra laughed, because I wanted fucking Mary Mumbles to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mary Mumbles. Yeah, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing because I'm doing the right thing. If that fucking thing isn't safe for a goddamn 13, I can see if it was a baby, ah, ah, making some little baby crawl through there. <laughs> it's a fucking kid. Who probably knows more about computers than I do, and they're, they're like, yeah, no, don't think so. Come over here.